Hello and welcome back to Big G's How To Tutorials. Today we're going to be talking about chain link fencing. We're going to start from the beginning. I'll give you a supply list, also what you need to do to determine your length, and also how to construct it. And hopefully by the end of the video we'll have a full chain link fence and we'll be ready to install it in the business that of your choosing. Uh, the one that I'm working on is around my old depot. It was one of the very first buildings, or actually the very first building that I put on the layout. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick, and then we will jump into the supply list and start building a fence. Thank you. Now we're going to go in and we're going to take a look at the supplies that you'll need for this project, along with the tools that you'll need for this project. So my most crucial ones are going to be the instant power super glue, the insta set spray, and this just helps speed up the process as when you're gluing the pieces together. This will make your project a whole lot smoother and faster, allowing you to do this hopefully in an afternoon or in a day's time. The prep work is what will take you the most time. So, speaking of prep work, the next supply that you will need, I use Jumbo Paper Clips. And this brand here, I picked it up, I believe, at Walmart. Um, it is recycled paper clips. There is a hundred of them in the box. Of course, they are very large. And the nice thing is, is they're already the color that I'm needing, which is a real shiny silver. Because what I'm going to do, even if you're making an aged one, start with this and then you can rust it up as much as you need to with pastels, uh, paints, or chalks. The next thing that you'll need on your supply list, wedding bell or tool. And this... I got this one roll, and you can see how much fabric is on there. There's the center core, and it goes all the way out there. Several wraps on there. Definitely more fencing than I will ever need in any of my in-scale layouts, even if I ever built a full end-to-end -end of the house layout. I definitely would not use all of this for chain link fencing, so I got it in a silvery color, and as well as the paper clips, it will be perfect. And as I get a little closer with it, you can actually start to see the little X's in it, and it is actually perfect for in-scale fencing. All right, as far as the supplies go, that is it. The next thing that you'll need is your tools. You'll definitely need a good pair of sharp scissors. Uh, this will be for your tool. You're going to want a good pair of side cutters because those paper clips, you're going to want to cut them with side cutters. You're not going to want to use your track cutters. FYI, they will nick your side or your track cutters. Your side cutters goes right through them, no problem at all. A little pressure, got that. Now the next piece, you can opt on this. You can use any set of pliers that you want. The kind of pliers that I use are a jeweler's set of pliers, and the reason I use those is it helps in the bending process of your fence. It's going to give you a nice, clean, crisp 90 degree angle, which is what you're going to need on some of the paper clips. I'll show you that here in a few minutes when we go into building the fence. So, with this set, you're going to see that it has a pair of cutters, which as you can tell, there's a little nick in there, so definitely be careful with what you're using the cutters on, because it will nick them up. But as far as the cutters go, I really don't use the cutters too much. It's going to have a box grip, and that is 90 degree angle on that. And then you're going to have two cones that come up. And a lot of times these will be used in neck. Uh, necklaces, bending metal for that, makes nice loops. You can make just about any size. 
So after I run the paper clip through the box set and bend it to where I need it, a lot of times I'll put it up here and I'll go ahead and I'll bend it and give it that nice, clean, sharp 90 degree turn. Um, with the paper clips, one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to use these to straighten it out. And when you're straightening the paper clips out, these really come in handy. So I would recommend these probably over any other set of pliers, but you can use your own set of pliers. Um, just know that you might have to get something to help you with finish the bins off so that they're nice, clean, and crisp. Okay, in building the fence, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take and get your paper, get your paper clips out. You're going to want to kind of guess at first how many of these you're going to need. A little bit later on, I'll show you how to measure for your fencing. Um, to give you a rough idea and that'll be after you've straightened several of these out or however many you think you're going to need for it. So you can do this a couple different ways. Usually what I'll do is I'll start out and I'll go ahead and I'll bend them with my fingers. It helps when you don't have the pliers in your hand. And just try to get it as straight as you can to start with. And then the pliers you can come back in and kind of finish it off. Now another thing you can do instead of paper clips is you can actually use piano wire. Um, I'd find this is more cost effective and get a whole lot more um, metal and straight rods out of a hundred pack of jumbo paper clips. I think I gave like two dollars for them, maybe three and you buy a pack of piano wire you're looking at maybe two to five pieces of piano wire in there and looking at spending three to five maybe even six or seven dollars depending on your thickness of it so the paper clips are a little bit larger than probably what the poles ought to be but this is going to add rigidness to your fences and you'll be able to work with it a lot easier so I find that they come in handy, and by the time you set it down there, it's going to do the trick. Of course, if you're rivet counting and you're measuring every single thing out, you definitely probably want to go with piano wire. But in my case, this is going to work out perfect. And what I'm doing with the pliers is I'm just going through, and you can kind of see in the pliers how much of a bend that that has. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to come through, and you're just going to want to try to straighten that out as much as possible and make it as straight as you can. So that is what we're doing right now. Show you how to do one on camera and then I'll go off camera, get the rest of them knocked out and come back to you when I get all of them. And then I'll show you the next step. We're going to be taking a look at this business today. This is what we're going to be putting the fence around. So. What we're going to do is we're going to have to determine where we're going to have everything located at. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start laying out the first of the paper clips. And we'll determine where our fence is and start trying to shape it into place. So what you do is you just set your lengths of paper clips down like that after they're straightened out or piano wire, whichever you choose and you try to determine exactly where you want the perimeter to be and go from there. And these are pretty good length, so this will just give you a rough idea of where you need your fencing out. And once you have that, then you can determine pretty much how much you're gonna have to need in supplies as far as the little pieces go. Now keep in mind too that, like for instance, on this one right here, we're going to take and we're going to bend it into place so that it fits where you need it to. I'll show you that here in just a minute, but for right now, we'll go ahead and lay the rest of the pieces out and go from there. And go down here, I'm going to try to leave this one a little long, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie that into the side here. And then we're going to come to the other side, come out and around the back side of the barrels, down here. And we're going to have a gate that comes across here. 
and that's where that'll tie back into this piece. Come up, we're gonna have, we've already got a gate that's built here. Um, I'll bring that in here in a little while. And then we'll start up and we'll have the corner that will go down. I'm going to go all the way down to the end of the spur. Got that piece. Okay. So roughly... Hopefully you can see most of that. That's going to be pretty much our fenced area. Like I said, with the addition, we're going to have to add a little length here. We'll bend this one. And then we'll also have, actually, the extra length will come from this piece. I forgot about it. Good, those barrels aren't glued down, so I'll move them around a little bit. So, with that being said, we'll bend this one, cut out for the gate, take the excess piece over here, we'll probably come along and tie in pretty much, we'll bend this one so that it kind of follows this gravel line right here. So, give me just a minute and we'll be right back and hopefully have everything cut and ready. Okay, a few minutes ago I forgot that you actually do need one more tool for the job, and that's going to be your N-scale ruler, or HO, O-gauge, whichever size that you're building the fences in. You're going to need this because it's going to give you your measurements for what you need, unless you can calculate them, which I can. Uh, for the most part, 10 feet is going to equal 3 quarters of an inch, and 10 feet is basically what we're going to start using for the rest of this build. 10 feet for the height is what I'm going for in the chain link fence. I'm going to usually cut my poles that go down um, vertically. Those are going to be cut at probably 12 to 13 feet, giving me an extra 2 to 3 feet to bury down into the foam to align where I need my fencing to go. So with that being the case, what you're going to do is you're going to come out here, you're going to put your bins after you get them straightened out, or your paper clips, you're going to put that down on your gauge scale. And then once you get that, you're going to want to come in. 10 feet is going to be right here. I'm going to go on up 2 feet for right now. And you'll differ in each of the cuts, because usually what I'll do is I'll take this first cut, put it up with the next piece, cut it so you may go 12 to 13 maybe even 14 feet by the time you're done just kind of keep an eye on it as you're cutting it to try to keep it in range of where you want it to be so usually on my first one what I'll do I'll grab my pliers and these help picking up small pieces and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in at the 12 foot mark and I'm going to go ahead and mark that with those and then I can pick those, pick that up, and that is right where I want it to be. Try to keep this on camera as much as I can. So this piece right here is 12 scale feet and in scale. And it's just a little bit longer than three quarters of an inch. Like I said, three quarters of an inch is exactly 10 scale feet in in scale. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in right beside it with your side cutters. And then once you do that, of course you move down just a hair on that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move, move it up just a little bit. And then holding both, both sides of it, go ahead and give it a cut. And you now have... Probably sitting at 13 on that one. And that's actually right on the nose of 12. So we have a 12 foot fence post. So 12 foot vertical post. Alright. So, 
just to give you a heads up, a full length of your paper clip, and you set that down, that's actually going to measure over 80 feet on your ruler. I had to guess, I would say probably in the neighborhood of about 82 to 83 feet total, my ruler runs out at 80 feet in end scale. So, and it looks like it's maybe two extra feet, so we're going to call it 82 to 83 feet. So, one, one paper clip for in, excuse me, for end scale is going to be a long piece of fencing. Now, I'm going to show you the next thing that you're going to want to do. We're going to take a full length. We're going to come down here with it, and we're going to put it on the ruler again. Now, what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going two to three feet extra for your fencing, uh, for the vertical posts that are going to be going up and down. What we're going to do with that is that extra two to three feet will sink into the ground. We'll measure our tool out. We'll make it 10 foot in vertical height, cut it straight all the way down, and then that will be the fence run, and then the extra footage will go down into the foam scenery to help place the fence, and then we'll glue that in from there. So with that being the case, we're going to come down, and on each one of our top rods. We're going to come to the 12 foot mark. Actually, I'm going to make it 13 on these. Alright, so I've got it at 13. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to bend. You just want to put you a little bend in there, and then you want to go ahead and make that a full 90 degree bend. The easiest way to do that, and that's why I like the jewel, the jewelry pliers, you put it in right near the edge of that 90 degree, but still in the little rollers that you have here. And we're just going to bend that up until it looks like a 90 degree. If you go slightly past it, it will be okay, but that is going to give you 13 scale feet up and down. And then that should give us somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 feet of fencing, and it's right on the money. So yeah, you're looking at 83 feet for a paper clip. Of course, that may vary a little bit between paper clips depending on how how long they were cut in the factory but they should be within that 83 foot range of end scale so i'll bend the rest of these real quick i think i'm gonna need about eight of these and then we'll go into the train room we'll lay these down start bending these into place then we'll come back and when we get back we'll take and start laying out the vertical post and getting them put in position and try to start building fence. I'll be right back. Thanks. This is going to be where we take the full fences that we've got. Like I said, this length here is going to measure out 70 feet. And then we have 13 feet here. And this will jab down into the foam. After we put the tool on there and the vertical uprights, this will look like a fence, but for right now what I need to do is I need to lay these out and determine where the bends need to be so that that step will be ready for the next. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to lay these out. I'm going to go around the perimeter, just laying them down. I already do have my gates pre-made. Now, I did not buy these. I actually did make these. And they actually turned out pretty well. This is the one that will go over the track. Pretty 
get it back in place here. And as you can tell with this, it does swing. Eventually I am planning on having this on a mechanism to where I can actually turn it over here on the fascia side. But for right now, it will be hand operated. And that's actually out a little further than I'd like, so we're going to go ahead and move that and get the final placement pretty close to where we need it to be now. Now you do want these to set a little higher than what your tracks are, because this is metal, so that will short your railroad out if you have the gate open and it's laying across the rails. So. I'm thinking I'm going to probably put something on there to keep it from going any further on there. Um, a washer or something of that sort and dab glue maybe. And then that way it can freely open and close and I don't have to worry about it passing over and shorting out the line. So with that being done, we're going to go ahead and lay the fence out to where we need it to be. Since we already know that that's a predetermined position, the rest of it should come in pretty easy. I'm going to stop on that end because the next thing I need to do is I will need to get this one bent into place. brought my jeweler pliers in. I'm going to come out to the length that we want it. I'm going to put a bend right about there at 90 degrees. Alright, so the piece looks like that. This will be your upright it will come out and then turn 90 degrees and go back towards the tanks back here. Now that you have that in place, we'll go ahead and we'll try to make the connection between it and the back. Now one thing you'll notice is I have not put in the containment concrete for the storage tanks yet, nor have I added the ladders, and the piping that I have is not glued into place yet. There is still scenery work to be done with that. One of the key issues was making sure where the fencing was going to be. I think what I'm going to do on the fencing, I'm going to come back, go ahead and up, put this one upright like it was standing in place. about there I'm going to put about a 30 to 45 degree angle in. With that I'm going to go ahead and have to put that in. Now 
and then our next piece can come in. And as you can tell, or I'll move the camera so you can tell. Got a short piece right here that I'm gonna have to make. Okay, so as of right now, I have this piece here will actually get turned over and come into the side here towards the front of the tank. So we're going to go straight back and then we're going to do the soft bend right here that will come on back and then I'll need that short piece there. And that will follow all the way down. And that will come into the side of the gate there. So our next thing, we will need to take, and I already have it marked here on the foam. We're going to come down to this dot from the gate. And then from there, we're going to come down along. And then you can see where I've got the next fence gate out. We're going to butt up against it. And then from the other side of the path there, we're going to come along the back here and tie right into the back side of the tanks. And then that will give you a full fenced in area there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish bending those pieces in and get those done. And then I'll come back to you as we're building the fence. I've got all the bends done on the fencing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to start putting the uprights in. I've got those cut at 13 feet, 12 to 13. And we're going to start gluing those in vertically like this. We'll space them out to where it looks right on the fence. And then we'll add the tool. We'll get all these glued in then I'll be right back with the tool. We're going to take the wedding veil or the tool. And we're going to take it and cut a long strip of it off from the roll. From there, you're going to want to put it across your ruler and measure out your 10 scale feet. Or you may want to do 12 or 15, however tall you're wanting to make your fence. In this instance, I'm making a 10 foot. So... You're going to put your blade right down near the 10 foot. Line your bell up. And start to make your first cut. And then you're going to want to take that cut and go all the way down the whole length of what you've got cut out and that will start to form your fencing. I'll be right back once I got this cut. Now what we've got is all the fencing posts in place. They're glued in. Also, uh, another thing you can do is take some clothespins, turn your fencing upside down, and then you can actually glue the post into place there. Add your insta set and let it sit for five to ten minutes afterwards, and you should be good to go there. On some of the fencing, you can take and actually stand it up after you got it bent to where you need it. And this actually helps too, because then you can actually start applying your tool after you've got it cut. And usually, what I'll do is I'm cutting it and gluing it in the place. I'll do long strips and then cut off where I need. But then you take your glue and you just dab it in the corners, in the middle, and then maybe a dot or two along the top there. Pull your tool. And it's harder to do with just one hand. I don't have any glue applied though. And you pull it tight and then let it sit there for a few minutes. Pull it tight and then after that you can let that go of course it's not got the glue on it 
then you move to your next section, so on and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get that all glued in, and then we'll come back to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you've taken the steps and the time and the patience to come this far, your fence should start looking like this. And once you have this, then it'll be ready for installation out on your layout. Now, for right now, I'm not going to show the reveal just yet. On April 15th of 2020, I do plan on having an update, and on that update, this fence will be put out on the layout and in its final space, glued in everything. Now, to this point, I've got about 14 hours wrapped up into this fence, and not just this section, but actually all of the sections of the fence is going around the building and business that I'm putting it around. I've done a little over 600 scale feet of in scale fencing for this project. So I've put in a lot of time and a lot of effort and I am very pleased with the results. Once you get it to the point that you have it here, what you'll do is you will go out to your layout and pretend that it's foam at the moment. And what you'll do is you'll grab the fence in the middle section here and you'll gently start to push down on it and as you push down that paper clip will actually stab your foam and with a little extra pressure not a whole lot you'll just keep pushing and it will actually insert into the foam and then at that point once you have all the legs done you'll want to go through each leg make sure that it's all the way down and go all the way down to the edge of the bottom of the fence once you get that done then you can go in and you can add little drops of glue at each fence post and that will secure it all the way down and you shouldn't have to worry about it coming out at any point unless you really really take and bump it really hard but as you can see you can see on the other side of the fence no problem at all you can see the little X's just like you would on the regular chain link fence as you're putting your tool on you'll notice that you'll have a little bit of excess at the top. When you get that excess at the top, a lot of times it'll be up about that high or so. What you'll do is you'll take your pair of scissors and just go right along the top edge of that bar and just trim them down. And as you can tell, I'll try to get in a little closer, you'll have your, you'll have your chain link that will actually go right to the very top. I can get it to focus here but you'll actually have your chain link, you can kind of see it on um, this one right here. Your chain link will go all the way up to the very top just like it would on a real fence. A lot of times they'll leave about one extra chain link on the top. Sometimes they'll weld it right at the very top and cut the excess off. But this one piece has several bends on it. And as you can tell, it is very sturdy. I'm holding it just with the two fingers there, or the finger and the thumb. Another thing that I'll do on my fences until final installation is I will leave this little excess on. And what that does is that allows me to butt this up against the next piece. Now what you'll notice is on this end I have the leg bent down. This is one paper clip coming up and then out. On the opposite end, you'll notice that I have the leg come up here, which this is just one that I've got glued into the place, and then the bar comes across and it stops over here. What that'll do is that'll go to the next paper clip that has the bend going down. I'll glue right at the very top edge here onto the next paper clip after I have it in final location and installed. Once you do that, the whole fence then becomes one solid fence and makes it very rigid, which it's already pretty rigid because you've made it out of the paper clips. Um, but it will make one solid piece of fencing going all the way around except for your gates. Now on the gates, what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave one side all the way down 
you're going to leave a lot of excess on it because you want it to go really deep into your scenery. You'll come up and you will build a solid rectangle for the paper clip. And then what you'll do is you'll put your crossbars in and you'll want them at 45 degree angles. And you'll actually do, you can do two X's or you can do one piece coming down. Now, when I do the video on the 15th, I will be showing those two gates off that I have. One of them goes across the railroad track. It is prototypical. I actually took it from some photos that I did at a railroad. And you can see how well those came out on the next video update. So please stay tuned for that. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And good luck with your fences. Like I said, you can also apply these techniques to HO scale. You might want a little bit larger tool. You could actually use this one probably, but you'll want the excess to probably be more prototypical, a little bit larger than what I've got here. I went with the very smallest tool size that I could find so that it would look more suited for in scale. But you'll find the tool that looks appropriate with the excess. And then on your paper clips, you could use that as a HO as well. I just did the larger for in scale so that it was very rigid because if you go too much smaller than this, it becomes a very flimsy fence and then you won't be able to actually put that in and get it installed on your scenery safely without tearing your fence all to pieces. And once you get to this point, trust me, you will want to be as careful as you can with those fences as you can tell you can see all the way through it no problem at all and you can see right on past if I had it down low enough you'd be able to see the corner pocket over on the pool table there so with all of that being said like I hope that you have a great day and thank you for tuning in and good luck with making your fences till next time bye